Hey everybody, welcome back to Why Not RV. I want to go ahead and give you guys a quick life update and show you that I went ahead and bought a farm. Remember, if you want to learn more and make less mistakes while RVing, be sure to hit that subscribe button, drop a like and a comment down below. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Everyone can meet Bo. This is our new farm dog. He's a great peer. Uh, he's a little bit over a year old. He's been great so far. But welcome to the new farm. Uh, I've not named it yet. No, it's not going to be the Why Not RV Farm or anything crazy like that. But uh, it's just a beautiful piece of property. We have 40 acres all the way back up to the, to the ridge of the mountain back there. And it's just absolutely beautiful. We're here uh, a little bit north of Bristol, Virginia. And it is just absolutely gorgeous. We could not be happier. It's just so peaceful and serene out here. It's everything that I love about being at a harvest host in my own front yard. Now, I did go through a couple of pretty major life events recently. And if you're on Instagram, you follow me there, you probably saw that we were in a flood. And when I say we, I really mean she, um, because my girlfriend was at, at the RV park with the RV while I was up in Michigan dealing with some emergency family issues. And while I was up there, the campground had an active flood and literally flooded the place out and the RV got flooded. Now, fortunately, I was able to walk her through as much as I possibly could to go ahead and minimize damage, get the Starlink down off the roof, be able to, to move the RV if someone was able to. Unfortunately, no one was able to um, because I have a gooseneck. So kind of a, kind of a, thing there if, if you're considering having a gooseneck uh, always think about that emergency situation of someone not being able to move your rv in an rv park because everyone has the regular fifth wheel hitches now i did later find out that there's actually a, a, a piece on amazon that's basically a, a kingpin on the bottom and a goose ball on top and it can go into a fifth wheel hitch and then the gooseneck my gooseneck could have connected to pretty much anyone's fifth wheel hitch and they could have pulled me out of there unfortunately didn't know that at the time and my girlfriend was doing everything she possibly could to get someone to help us move it um, before it got too high, but she was unable to. Now the water did come up the RV um, and to the baggage door, but it went over the baggage door by a couple inches, but no water actually went inside the bay. I couldn't freaking believe it. I mean, all my stuff in there would have been completely, completely destroyed and it didn't go into the wet bay. Now the, the floodwaters did go ahead and reach the underbelly um, we had a lot of floating debris, sticks and whatnot. And, you know, she did bring the slides in emergency type style. And uh, I, I did have an issue with our kitchen slide um, that I'm currently actively fixing. And maybe that'll be next week's episode of how to fix that kind of thing. But, um, you know, I, all the underbelly stuff did get wet. So, I, I, you know, I got that opened up and aired out as quickly as I possibly could um, to prevent any further damage. The only thing I haven't fully figured out yet of what's wrong is my generator. It won't start since the flood. Um, it did cover the main like computer board that's in the in the generator um, by a couple inches of water. However, that's like a sealed device. It's all sealed. So I, I don't know if water did or didn't get in there, but it's not coming on. So uh, I'm going to still try a few more things and then potentially call someone out uh, to go ahead and get that taken care of. The day the flood occurred that morning, I basically walked my girlfriend through how to max out the, the jacks as high as it could possibly go. And if she didn't do that, if she had just left it level where it was at, it for sure would have done a lot more damage because she was able to raise it a good two or three inches more. And right now, if the water level had gone two or three inches more, it's possible that that could have gone through the baggage doors, destroyed everything underneath, possibly reached the main living space, and uh, cause a lot more damage. And, and worst case, it could have even moved the RV. It could have pushed it over with the, the water because it was from a river. I mean, it just, it could have been a lot worse. So if you're ever in an active flood, go ahead and max out your, your leveling jacks as high as you can possibly go if you can't move your RV. Now, the day the flood occurred uh, was actually the day I was coming back to the RV park, but I was still nine and a half hours away. So I started driving, got there as quickly as I possibly could, um, but by that time, of course, the water had stopped, fortunately, and then, re 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 you know, receded. And uh, again, we didn't didn't sustain too much damage, thank, thank God. But uh, because of that situation, I was like, well, we're closing on this property. Well, it was supposed to be later on that week. So I just reached out to the current homeowner and said, hey, would you mind if we just came and parked on the property? Um, I, you know, I'm 
sorry to be any inconvenience and if not i totally understand but she's just one of the sweetest sweetest ladies i've ever met and she let us come park the rv now the very next morning after we parked the rv that night at like nine o'clock at night uh we had a family loss and we had to drive to florida so we were here at the new property for literally a, ma a matter of like 12 hours, not even, and had to, to leave the next day to start our drive down to Florida to be with uh, my girlfriend's family. We were down there for all, about almost two weeks. It was like a, a you know, week and, and five days, a week and six days, and closing did get delayed on the house for other other reasons. Um, but uh, you know, by the time we got back to the house, we got here, and then the very following morning after we made it back here, I had another death in the family. So, um, and so long story short, we had three deaths between our two families in less than three weeks. And it was just so emotionally draining for both of us. And I just haven't been able to produce anything for you guys. And I'm sorry for that, but I'm sure you understand. And uh, now we are, we're here, we're closed. I have a lot to do on the house, a lot to do with the property. And uh, let me tell you a little bit about kind of the, the goal of, with Why Not RV and where we're gonna be going over the next few months. Inside the house, I'm gonna have my own office. It's gonna be a great amount of space. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and set up a bench test RV mock system, okay? I'm gonna build a 12 volt battery system and a 120 volt system uh, that basically is just gonna pretend like it's an RV. And that way what I can do is I can test so many products that companies are always reaching out to me wanting to send me different products, DC to DC chargers, converters, inverters, batteries, um, solar panels, all sorts of stuff. And I don't have a way of really doing that on my RV because I have a 48 volt system and I have 5,000 watts of solar. So I have no, no reason to just like randomly slap on some piece of equipment. It's just very difficult for me to do. So now with the new office space, I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, build that bench test system and I'll be able to swap out components, literally swap out a battery, swap out the inverter, swap out the converter and test some stuff um, with some actual baseline numbers and be able to provide you guys some hopefully some better quality um, Review videos on some some of the products that are out there now, of course I'm still gonna obviously be doing uh, a lot of solar Types of videos and you know, like I said those those product review videos are gonna mainly focus around the electrical system of an RV which is what the solar system feeds, right? Everyone always just thinks that solar is just the solar panels. Well, no, that's just how you recharge your batteries. It has nothing to do with anything else, really. And uh, so, you know, to be able to provide that better content for you guys and um, with more stable results, that's kind of what I'm, I'm hoping to be able to do as we move forward. Once again, I want to thank you guys for your continued support of Why Not RV and of the channel. And, and I just really appreciate you guys um, being patient over the past few weeks, me not being able to put out any content for you. And like I said, hopefully very soon we'll be able to get uh, into, you know, some real heavy testing and be able to really provide some better content for you guys for some good products and whatnot. Well, that's it for this week's video. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know you didn't really learn anything, but uh, next week we're going to get back to doing some product reviews because like I said, I have a few things that some companies have sent me. So we're going to go ahead and get those tested out and make some videos for you guys. Thanks for watching Why Not RV. Make sure you hit that like button. Drop a comment below, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.